what is going on guys welcome back to the channel critical overlord here so this will be another video to talk about halloween michael myers and this franchise that we all love so much so we're going to be recapping kevin williamson's halloween h2o treatment in this video here today it's the same general concept laurie strode is revealed to be alive after she was believed to have been dead but this is more connected to the events of four five and six rather than being a direct sequel to two that disregards jamie and her journey with michael that happened prior to the official h2o film that we know we got back in 98 so in this concept the same thing again goes down michael tracks down laurie strode at this school she's at chaos ensues on halloween night but in Kevin's treatment, this begins in Chicago and goes down the same path as Marion's opening from H2O. But we have a character named Rachel in the opening instead, who is revealed to be the daughter of Dr. Loomis. She comes home to her house in Chicago. It appears the place has been broken into. So she goes next door to her teenage neighbor named Timmy, not Jimmy, like we see in the official movie. They call the cops. The cops take too long. So Timmy investigates her house while she waits outside. He takes a bat as a weapon just in case, similar to how Jimmy took his hockey stick. Timmy finds nothing during his research or during his search of the house and goes to tell Rachel who ends up going inside. The house doesn't look to be burglarized from what she can see so she locks the doors to get ready for the evening. Rachel's phone ends up startling her when it rings once again but it's just the police letting her know that they are still on the way. Rachel's office is the only room that appears to have been tampered with in some capacity because files have been opened and gone through and of course Carrie Tate's file stands out the most during her findings. Rachel goes to call the cops but realizes she's not alone in this house and she runs over to Timmy's once more but upon arriving at Timmy's she knocks to open the door. The door opens and Michael is revealed to be behind the door. Timmy is seen dead and Michael slices Rachel to eventually kill her. We then jump to a prep school in Maine, not California, called Briarcliff, I believe, and Lori Strode is now known as Carrie Tate. She runs an all-girl prep school, and her son Mick, who is 16, not someone named John, loves it since he's the only boy on campus. The school is planning their annual Halloween festivities, which will include a dance with another prep school nearby with uh, all boys for the girls. So Lori is divorced, living a secret life, of course, and has a rocky relationship with Mick, who is described as hating his mother. Lori is still an alcoholic in this treatment as well, and the discovery of Rachel's death in the newspaper starts to worry her since Halloween is tomorrow night. We meet another character, a student named Sarah, who gives an oral report on the events of Halloween 4, 5, and 6 during the class. So this is the sequence that would have looped in the other trilogy, I'm assuming, and this could have been a gut-wrenching scene for Lori if this is how she would have found out that Jamie is dead, if she was present for this oral report. Lori and Mick fight about him going to live with his father, and she won't allow this, of course. We also still have Molly, but she seems to be very different. She's mostly an unattractive type of character in this treatment, but she's madly in love with Mick. Well, she, well she, yeah, she's described as being madly in love with Mick. And wants to ask him to the dance, but he's going to end up asking Sarah, who gave that oral report in class on his sister. Uh, Lori begins seeing Michael around campus, first behind a hedge, then outside of her classroom window, then behind sheets on the clothesline. So all of that is, of course, callbacks to that original movie. Lori tries to confide in a colleague named Jake, who is also a teacher there. He has a crush on her, actually, but he takes this opportunity to instead tell her that she needs help with her drinking issues. So she completely goes off on him. I'll leave a link to the treatment so you can get more specifics because I'm just trying to recap it as quick as I can with the most important bits of the story. We discover that the Michael that is appearing on campus is actually Mick, Lori's son. He found out that his mother's he found out about his mother's old journals that included details about the past 20 years and wanted to play a prank on her and Molly since she won't let him go live with his father. This is his way of getting what he wants in a way. So Mick, who again, more or less is just John, he probably would have been a lot more unlikable depending on how this could have been executed on screen because he he's annoying me already and this is just a treatment <laughs> we also have a guard at the school gates named hattie she's going to endure the same ll cool j type type sequence with a car approaching the gate she goes to check and doesn't notice michael myers slipping inside of the campus now her difference here is that she dies during this sequence because after this game of cat and mouse goes on with michael chasing after her she ends up just getting killed 
Molly eventually encounters Michael at the dance while that's going on and runs to tell Lori, who realizes they can't escape the campus but calls the cops for help. All of this leads to the surviving characters, Jake, Molly, Lori going up to a mountaintop. There's a helicopter crash. There's a tunnel filled with cars that the police discover where Michael seems to have slashed the throats of some of the drivers of these cars and blocked off ways to get through the tunnel. The movie ultimately ends with a bus sliding down the mountaintop that these characters make their way up to. This, the remaining characters are Mick, Lori and Molly. Molly eventually dies in the end. By the end of it all, Mick and Lori are the only two left standing and Michael is killed by a heli helicopter propeller. Now, I do not mind the aspects of this treatment, but it is kind of underwhelming. And again, I'll leave the full thing for you guys to read through in the description. I just found it to be a little underwhelming. There's some things about it that I do like. Obviously, I like the approach they took with Laurie Strode, Kevin Williamson's approach. And a lot of this treatment, honestly, when thinking about Halloween H2O, it just carried over into the, into the movie anyway. But for one, the ending with the helicopter propeller, while that would have been a definitive end, I just think that could have come off a little cartoonish, depending on how you portrayed this on screen, him getting killed and sliced in half, as it's described, by a helicopter propeller. Because Mick ends up leading him towards the blades, and that's what ends up killing Michael. Now, what I like about this treatment is that it does have me questioning if there was always still an intent for Michael to return for another sequel, how would they have explained who this person is dying at the end with the helicopter propellers if this treatment actually became the official script that we got for H2O? Because, again, there's a lot of it that's still carried over into H2O. Uh, Hattie, again, the guard, I'm not too sure how she could have come off on screen as a character because we didn't really get to learn too much about her from this treatment. But I'm sure, obviously, a full fleshed out script probably would have given her a lot more to do. But there's a lot about the treatment that's still carried over into the original or into the actual H2O film that we got. And again, Mick, who is, again, more or less John, I do not like him. He's pretty unlikable. And the way that they had connective tissue for four or five and six, I thought was a good good thing to have molly i don't know if i would have liked to see molly portrayed like this and again all this is just from a biased perspective because we have an actual h2o movie that just for me from being able to see that h2o movie sounds like it could have done better than this treatment if the treatment was actually what we had gotten but you guys should let me know what you think about it down in the comment section below. If you haven't already, of course, make sure you subscribe. Turn on post notifications and there's a video in the description. I'll have links on my social media accounts. I'm on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. You can message me there, of course. Let me know if there's any movies, news, or reviews I'm going to cover in the future. And with all that in mind, guys, I will see you in the next video.